In today's video, I am going to be breaking down the BMO MSCI Fintech Innovation Index ETF. This is actually a fairly new ETF. Its ticker symbol is ZFIN, Z-F-I-N. So let's get down, let's check this out. So the portfolio strategy has been designed to replicate to the extent possible the performance of the MSCI Fintech Innovation Index. Net of expenses, the fund captures this theme by investing in stocks that have a high exposure to innovative fintech companies. The fund invests and holds the constituent securities of the index in the same proportion as they are reflected in the index. This was actually developed in collaboration with the ARK Invest, or at least the MSCI ACWIIMI Fintech in the Fintech Innovation Index was developed in collaboration with ARK Invest. ARK, Kathy Woods, huge, huge investor, huge future looking type of person. She looks and sees, tries to find companies that will work extremely well in the future and she invests in them. She is extremely smart and I think that she is probably one of the smartest investors right now in today's day and age. So the management expense ratio, the MER is 0.45%, which means that roughly every $100 that you put in, it's going to be roughly about 45 cents that you're giving to BMO. Of course, if it was a thousand, it'll be $4.50. If it was $10,000, it would be $45 a year. And then of course, it just keeps on moving down the line. Now the average market volume is not huge, but we have to remember that this is a fairly new ETF, 17,000 shares on average a day. Its risk rating is medium, and it does, it's designed for investors looking for growth solutions, exposure to the global theme of fintech innovation, benefits from local currency appreciation, and of course is professionally managed by BMO and I personally just really love the BMO's uh, asset management group. Uh, they tend to do a very good job with their ETFs. And no, this is not a promotion video or anything. They did not pay me to say that. Um, I just have had great success with BMO ETFs. I just really like them. So the one downfall to dividend investors like myself is the fact that it just only pays once a year. Uh, that's what it's set up to look like anyways. It looks like it's going to be a pay date next year of January 5th. So if you're looking for monthly or quarterly distributions, that's not going to be the ETF for you. However, the top companies that it currently holds is PayPal, Apple, Amazon, Visa, Salesforce, NVIDIA, MasterCard, Alibaba, ServiceNow, as well as Square. Now, out of those companies, the one company that I just absolutely love and think everyone needs to invest in today is Apple. I think that Apple is severely, severely, severely undervalued right now because they just absolutely crushed earnings yesterday and their stock is down. So um, that just makes no sense to me. Just because they said that iPhone chips are going to be a struggle and iPhone shipments might be down because they can't get chips for them, yet they just did 36% better year over year and 50% better on iPhones year over year. They beat earnings estimates by $8 billion. So why are they down? Visa and MasterCard are basically the biggest um, bi biggest factors for the future and more and more people are going to be buying stuff online. They are going to need Visa and MasterCard. And then of course Nvidia because there is that chip shortage. Um, the more the less chips that are out there the higher price they are which means that they're higher revenue for Nvidia and just things like that. It's going to be huge. Alibaba is a big negative for me. Anything to do with China I stay away from. China just they run their own rules and it's scary so I stay away from stuff like that. However, it's only a 4.3% rating so I'm not really worried about that all that much. And of course Amazon because they're basically going to run the future. When you look at their chart, again, they have not been around for very long. As we can see here, they've only been around for a few months. Even the MACD hasn't even registered yet. So uh, it's something that you have to keep in mind that this hasn't been around for all, all that much time so you can't really get a good gauge on how well this ETF is going to go. However, there has been large, basically 
uh, issues with tech in general. There's been a lot of downward momentum trying to push them. I think that Tesla, one of the tech companies that uh, is not in the top 10 in this ETF, may be a fantastic option if you're looking to invest in tech. Apple is another one if you wanted to do an individual stock in tech. Those are my two personal opinions. However, remember to always do your own research. I think this will do great because it holds the largest tech companies in the world. And of course, if a large tech company is financially stable, if we look back at the big tech crash of 1999, what are the companies that really died? It was the companies that had promise, but they under delivered and didn't make money. Meanwhile, companies like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, those companies, they were making money and when that happens their stock price and their their company in general is going to be around for a very long time so because of that i think that all of the companies that this etf holds are going to be extremely strong into the future no matter what happens we may have some short-term uh, adjustments in their price but in the long term i think they're going to be pretty well set especially when you start looking at the internet of things more and more things having internet and that's just a recipe for more tech in general. I hope that you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button, subscribe. I'll see you guys again next time.